I can't imagine anybody better suited to speak about what's going on right now with voting access and the U.S. Postal Service than our next guest, who just might end up on a postage stamp herself one day. She is the history-making, former minority leader of the Georgia House of Representatives, founder of Fair Fight and Fair Count, and author of the new book, Our Time Is Now. Please welcome Stacey Abrams. Hi, Stacey. How are you? I am well. How are you? It's a delight to be here with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so, 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 so much. So we're taping this before night two of the DNC, where you are a keynote speaker, but we're airing it afterwards. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, you were brilliant. You were brilliant. Thank you. Because I'm sure, thank I'm you sure so you much. were. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch night one? In particular, did you watch Michelle Obama? I don't think that anyone was allowed not to watch it. Right? She was glorious. Just glorious. So I, I actually put a word out to my social media followers that I was going to be talking to you, which everybody was crazy excited about. So they sent in some questions. So I'm going to go back and forth between my questions and theirs. So here's a question um, from Twitter. If we live in non-swing states, what can we do to get the blue vote out in key swing states? So I would encourage you to go to fairfight.com. That's exactly what we do. We are working to protect voters in swing states, and that means getting thousands of volunteers to help us. We've got 67,000 already, but wow. we know that the opposition has more than 50,000 folks signed up to help intimidate voters, so we need to double their numbers. So we'd love to have your support. Fairfight.com will sign you up and we'll get you, get you to work. Now, voter suppression is really your mission. It's your passion to, to fight that. Can you explain what's been going on with the post office and mail-in voting leading up to November? Sure. So let's understand that voter suppression is any time you prevent or discourage someone from voting. And because we know there is a wave coming, unfortunately, Donald Trump and his cronies have decided to steal the vote by scaring us out of mail-in voting. They know that this is one of the best ways to vote in a pandemic. And so what we've watched for the last few weeks has been an attempt by Louis DeJoy of the Postal Service. He's the new postmaster general. He slowed down the mail. He removed sorting boxes. He started removing mailboxes and was doing basically every nefarious thing you can imagine. What they have decided, though, is that they're going to walk it back. Uh, they are going to make certain that voting does work in America by mail. But here's the thing. We know that it's not over. They're going to try again. And the most important thing is to not panic. We can vote by mail. We can vote early in person. We can vote on Election Day. But don't let them steal your success by scaring you out of using your tools. Mm, so the biggest thing that we can do to fight voter suppression is vote. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and it's no matter what state you live in, you have usually three options. They're only about... 10 states that limit you, but almost every state you can vote by mail, you can vote in person early, and you can vote on election day. And if you go to vote.org, they can tell you what your options are no matter which state you live in. So DeJoy testifies before the Senate on Friday. If you were going to interview him, if you were questioning him, what would your first question be? If you believe in our democracy, then your responsibility is to support it, not to undermine it. And what he has done since he took office is undermine access. And worse, he's undermined confidence. And as I said, it's not just preventing you from voting, it's discouraging you from voting. And the panic that has ensued because people believe that the post office, this thing that has been around as long as the Republic could no longer be trusted, is a terrible thing to do to Americans. And I hope that he has learned his lesson and he's going to be better. Mm. What do you think we should do to hold our leaders accountable and make sure that every vote is counted? First, we have to overwhelm them with our presence, and that means make a plan. Don't presume that just because this latest attempt to scare us out of voting, because it hasn't possibly worked as well as they thought, that they're going to abandon their efforts. Make a plan to vote. That's why I talk about all three ways that you can vote in almost every state. Number two, show up in force and don't show up alone. And whether that's mm. virtual using your social media, make certain that people you know, people you like, people you kind of, meh, no matter who they are, <laughs> make certain that they check their registration, make a plan themselves, and that they vote as well. Because when we overwhelm with our presence, we get the democracy we deserve. 
This is a question I love from LaShawn on Twitter. Considering the direct impact local policies have on our lives, how can we motivate Americans to spend as much time thinking about our local politics as we do about our national politics, right? So not just focusing on the top of the ticket. How do we get people to focus on what's happening in their own neighborhoods and how it'll be affected in the next election? So I start by asking people, what are you concerned about? And typically mm. they're not gonna give you a national issue, they're gonna give you a local issue. Connect the dots for them. Make sure they understand that if you care about people being arrested in your communities at unfair rates, that that means you need to talk about your mayor. If you're concerned about how your kids are being educated, that means you need to vote in the school board. If your trash doesn't get picked up enough, that's a county commission issue sometimes. And the most important thing is make sure you participate in the 2020 census because those are th that's how they draw the lines for everything that happens from school board all the way to the presidency. How does the census play into all of this? They're, um, they're stopping the census early, right? They, right now, they plan to stop it early. And if they do, that means they're going to erase millions of people from the story of America, namely communities of color and the poor. It is dangerous. It's going to cost those communities money, but it will also steal their political power because instead of counting them, they're going to guess. It's called imputation. And it is a terrible thing to do when you have cut short the actual count. It's going to not only hurt your communities now, imagine a decade of not having any of the resources you need while those communities that have more than enough get even more of what you deserve. We need to make certain we fill out the census for our economic power and our political power. Stacey, I love you so much. In these times, people can feel so helpless and paralyzed with fear and anxiety. And you always give us tangible things that we can do starting today to make a real difference. I'll be sure to post all of these suggestions on my social media. I love you. Her book is Our Time Is Now. Thank you for joining me. Stacey Abrams, everyone.